Hey everyone, welcome to the AISP Inside Sales Studio. This week's Monday Morning Salesman is brought to you by our proud sponsor, Lessonly. Be sure to stick around at the end to hear how their online enablement platform can help you learn, practice, and get to your quota faster. Now, we're here today with special guest, Nikki Harrell. Nikki, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here, Bob. It's really good to have you. I'm glad we met a few weeks ago, and uh, I, I was really interested in some of the work you're doing at Amazon Web Services. Nikki is uh, the early career program manager to, to develop her talent pool. Uh, today, she's going to talk to you about developing younger, less experienced sales reps, but more specifically, she's going to talk about diversity and inclusion in the talent pool. So, Nikki? Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bob. It's great to be here. So, you know, uh, in my role leading early career programs, I'm um, specifically for our demand generation team. So if you think about where I sit in the organization, I am the person who's responsible for stewarding our earliest, newest talent direct from university into our organization, getting them um, incorporated into and fully onboarded into our sales organization, right? So when you start to think about how one does that and does that in an effective way that helps to build a diverse talent pool, mm -hmm. um, there are a few things that you have to focus on, right? So the first and foremost is for any intern program, and I'll focus a bit on the intern program that I lead. It's a summer internship, um, typically about 12 weeks each summer. I also lead a early career sales rotation program. And in both of these, the, the core of it is providing our newest, earliest talent with exposure to the motions that they most need to be successful in sales, right? So we're talking about over-indexing on things like training and certification and projects that help to drive value, value for the business while also helping to develop our earliest talent and giving us, at least in the terms of the intern program, data that helps to inform some hiring decisions. But when I think about all of that and getting that done for the organization, um, central to our efforts um, is a focus on recruiting and retaining diverse young professionals, right? Um, just by way of a, a, a few stats that make me really happy, um, we are just shy of 50% women in our intern cohort, right. got 100, 150 interns, um, just shy of 50%, yeah. and, um, and a little over a third of what we call um, BLNA, which is Black, Latinx, and Native American. So we really are sort of indexing on ensuring that we have as diverse a cohort of interns because the intern pool feeds our early career pool for full-time roles, right? So the, the folks who are interns that receive return offers are the folks who end up being our earliest career hires in our rotation program. Yeah. No, so what I was, you know, I'm, what I was just going to say about that is, you know, um, one of the things that's super important for us is we think about how we um, build to you know, 50% women in a technology internship, right? right? right. And, you know, and more than a third of what's historically underrepresented minority groups right. is, you know, where do we recruit? You know, as right. I think about advising other organizations, it's really about, are you going out to the organizations or companies or, or I'm sorry, universities that are closest to your offices, which may or may not happen to be indexing on having um, larger constituents of, of underrepresented minorities and women? Um, where are you, what organizations are you partnering with? What events are you doing recruiting? You know, where, where are you doing your recruiting in terms of events and how are those events promoted? Are they promoted in diverse spaces? Um, and so those are some of the things that we think about until you want to ask me a question. You, you know, that's fantastic. You mentioned colleges, universities, the AISP works with a, a number of colleges that actually have selling sales or sales related programs, whether it's a major or minor or an actual bachelor degree in this program. Do you work with colleges uh, specifically uh, that have selling programs that would, would have graduates that might be a good fit or interns that might be a good fit? Absolutely. So we definitely, as we look for our interns, we're looking for folks that typically are um, either business um, majors yeah. and typically a lot of those majors are um, people who are focused on sales in particular. Yep. Yep. Um, but then we also look because we're AWS, we also look at um, at technology, right? Those those yes. organizations, those um, universities that are focused on um, or have really strong technology programs. And then we we sort of triangulate. We have that list. We also then look specifically at historically black colleges and universities yeah. um, to recruit there. And then also, and I'm not, not sure how many of your, um, your listeners are familiar with HSI, but historically, um, I'm sorry, Hispanic serving institutions. 
So these are um, universities that have a focus on and have a high population of underrepresented minorities who are Hispanic. Now, I was just going to say, so we look at, we've got a sort of three lists that we're triangulating on to ensure yeah. that we cast the broadest possible net to attract all of the bar raising talent that's out there in the market. So, so if you're a leader, the, the message is uh, kind of diversity in, in how you're recruiting, who you're talking to, the mm -hmm. colleges you're looking at, there's a wide range uh, of diversity there. But also you have a, an amazing, ro amazingly robust internship and then really onboarding if they get placed at AWS. Is there one tip we can sort of end uh, the episode with that would you could share with leaders around, well, let's say they get the diverse talent coming in and they're, they put them through an internship. Any tip around that internship, something you really got to make sure you do well? As it relates to diversity, yes. I think it is indexing on inclusion, right? So this is an important point. Diversity, you can't really have diversity if you don't also have inclusion. And what I mean by that is you're going to find yourself on a never ending sort of merry go round of hiring diverse talent and watching them walk out the door after their internship and not coming back or starting with the organization and leaving after a year because they don't feel included. And what does included mean? We're talking about ensuring that they feel like they can come to work and be their authentic selves and bring all the creativity and innovation that they were hired to bring to the organization. But if they don't feel comfortable in their own skin in your organization, they're going to leave. And the best way to ensure that you have inclusive talent is to, or inclusive practices is to talk about it. Be open. You know, for so long in organizations, talking about race and issues of race was um, <laughs> particularly taboo. We really need to step beyond that, get, uncomf get comfortable with being uncomfortable and have the discussion so yeah. that folks understand that the organization cares and that the organization wants to make steps to ensure that we have an inclusive environment so we can retain really awesome talent. You, you mentioned care. It's really largely a leader's responsibility to create that atmosphere of one, care, but listen, be open-minded. You know, great leaders kind of put their own ideas and thoughts aside and welcomes, you know, the diversity, the inclusiveness of those that they lead. Any final Absolutely. thoughts on that? Absolutely. I think the, 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 the important final point here is that, you know, there are tons of studies out there that say inclusion and diversity um, net you better positive results and productivity, better engaged teams, and honestly, yeah. higher and better outcomes for organizations. And at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. So oh, why not do it? This was really, really good. We appreciate it. How, how could those watching maybe follow some of your... Uh, maybe follow you socially or learn more about what you do and, and some of the things that you represent? Oh, sure. So I'm on LinkedIn at Nikki Harrell. Um, and that's probably the best place to find me. But certainly, certainly if you've got folks that reach out to you that want to le learn more, definitely send them my way. I'd be happy to chat. Nikki, sounds good. Thanks so much for uh, sharing these great ideas today. Now, please, viewers, stick around to hear from Lesson Lee. Everyone, good selling. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Lessonly is an LMS purpose-built for frontline teams. It empowers leaders to quickly create beautiful branded lessons and share bite-sized learning with their teams. Target training to specific reps, teams, or your entire company. The result? Keeping teams aligned and up-to-date is easier than ever. Practice is the backbone of great performance. So Lessonly enables reps to practice pitching, refine their selling tactics, and gain feedback on practice scenarios like email, phone, video, and more. This allows reps to learn from their mistakes behind the scenes so they can shine when it matters. With Lessonly, use data to measure the impact of learning, find areas for improvement, and make better decisions. We're helping three million learners and counting revolutionize their team training. That's why we've consistently been ranked as one of the top sales enablement platforms. Teams across the globe are reducing ramp time, improving retention, and hitting their goals with Lessonly.